Now in this session, we talk about the laws for combination energy. These are also known as the crashing law or the grinding law. Basically, there are three laws, the Rittinger's law, the Kick's law, and the Bond's law. There are other laws which are some sort of either modification or combination of these three. Now to start with, we'll look at the general formulation of this crushing or grinding loss. Now in their book, uh, Walker et al. they suggested that the energy required for size reduction is directly proportional to the decrease in size. That makes sense because as you want to do more and more size reduction, more and more energy will be required. The second point is more important. It says that the energy required is inversely proportional to the size to some power. So if you put these two together, DE tilde, here we put the mark tilde here. Just denote that this is specific energy. This is not total energy, meaning this is energy required per unit mass. Now that's proportional to negative of DD. The negative sign appears simply because the size is being reduced. So delta D is negative. The diameter at the beginning is larger than the diameter at the end. The second point is DE proportional to one over D to some power N. Here N is a constant. Now again, this E tilde is E over M, where E is the total energy and N is the mass, meaning E tilde is the specific energy. Now Walker proposed the form. That's really a general formulation of this Rittinger's law and the Kick's law. So what proposed is the energy required is proportional to the size reduction done. That makes sense simply because you want more and more size reduction, the energy requirement will be more and more. Now you see the negative sign here simply because the size will be reduced. So the final size minus the initial size that itself is negative. So energy required to be positive to make that positive there is this negative sign also he says this energy required is proportional to some power of the size of the particles now putting this together we get d can be written as proportional to negative dd over d n or if you write using a constant you can write i equals some constant 1 over dn. So this is the general formulation of the energy requirement for size reduction. Now if we put those two together, we get this relation dE tilde over dd equals negative c over dn where c is a constant. Note that this equation is nothing but a general formulation of the laws which are proposed much earlier. So these three laws are this Rittinger's law, Kick's law and the Bond's law. Now let's take a look at these individual laws and their relation to this general formulation. Now for Rittinger's law, which is proposed in 1867, if you plug in n equals 2 in this equation, you get the Rittinger's law. So doing that we have dE over dd, if I write the constant now Cr for a specific value of n, d1 over d squared. And if we do the integration now, so dE, dE tilde will be negative Cr 1 over d squared dd, and if we do the integration, we have integration of d delta will be given by this term. Now, if we have the feed material to be of df, the product size to be dp, the energy required is from 0 to energy required is e tilde. We can do the integration from 0 to e tilde to get this. We do the integration plug in the limit. e tilde will be negative c r, and the integration of this will be negative 1 over d to the limit df and dp. So negative negative becomes positive. It will be cr 1 over dp minus 1 over df. So this is what is called this 
the integers long. Now if n equals 2, we get this Rittinger's law. So you see, putting n equals 2 and if we integrate, then e tilde becomes CR where the CR is the constant for the Rittinger's law. It becomes, this should be 1 and this also should be 1, not C. 1 over dp minus 1 over df. Here dp is the size of the product and df is the size of the feet. Now Rittinger's law was based on the idea that the energy required for size reduction is proportional to the new surface area generated. We know that the specific surface area of particle meaning surface area per unit volume is proportional to 1 over d per particle. So, so Rittinger's law is based on the idea that the energy required is proportional to the new surface area generated. Now the second law was the Kick's law. So this is proposed in 1885. You plug in the value n equals 1, we will get this Kick's law. So plugging in n equals 1, we will get C write k for Kick's law, we will have 1 over d. Now doing the integration, d tilde will be ck 1 over d d d. If we do the integration for product size of dp and feet size of df, the required energy is e tilde, you get this formulation. And if we do the integration, you will have e tilde, here it will be negative ck natural logarithm of d df to d p. Now if you just take the negative sign and change the limit here, the other way you will end up getting e tilde v c k ln d f over d p. So this is the formulation of the Kick's law. So Kick's law, if you put n equals 1 in the general formulation, we get the Kick's law. So e tilde becomes c k, where c k is the constant term for the Kick's law and natural logarithm df over dp, where again df and dp are the size of the feed and the product. Now this law is proposed based on the theory that the equivalent relative reduction is sizes require equal energy, meaning that the energy required depends on the ratio of the product size and the feed size. And it does not depend on the size itself, rather the ratios. So that's the Kick's law. Now the third law is what is called this Bond's law. So Bond proposed that the energy required is proportional to the square root of the surface area to volume ratio. So again, S over V is square root of that equals is proportional to 1 over square root of D. We get the required energy equals CB, where CB is the constant for this Bond's law, 1 over square root of D product minus 1 over square root of D feed. Now if you look at this equation, this Bond's law can be obtained if you put N equals 1.5 in the general formulation. Now the two laws, Rittinger's law and the Kick's law was proposed in the 1800s. The Walker generalized those two laws in 1937 and Bond proposed the third law in 1952. If we put n equals 1.5 in this equation, we get the Bond's law. If we look at this value n equals 1.5, which is in between this value corresponding to the Rittinger's law, which was 2 and Kick's law which has 1. Now plugging in this value we get write CB here 1 over D 1.5. Now if we do the integration D E tilde negative CB 1 over D 1.5 DD to do the integration between df and dp, the required energy is tilde, we get this formulation. Now just simply doing the integration, we will get e tilde negative cb and there will be some constant term coming from this term over here. We will just keep that in that way. So if I write this constant to be negative kb, we will have 1 over d to the power 0 0.5 from df to dp. Now we change the limit by 
changing this negative sign here. So first DP and then DF, we'll end up getting E tilde, KB, this simply a square root of D, so it will be 1 over square root of D, P minus 1 over square root of D, F. So this is the general formulation of the Bond's law. This value 1.5 is really between these two values for Ritinger's law n equals 2, for Kick's law n equals 1. So this value of n for Bond's law is in between these two. Now Bond's law, this is called this so called the third law and it was proposed in 1952. So the Ritinger's law and Kick's law was proposed earlier, much earlier and then Bond proposed this third law. Now Bond argues that the two laws, Ritinger's law and the Kick's law, those does not fit with commercial crashing data over a long range. So he proposed something that really lies in between these two values for n. So it's in between these two laws, Rittinger's law and the Kick's law. Now Bond also proposed the concept of what is called this work index. Now work index is defined as energy required in kilowatt hour per ton of a very large feed to produce a product, 80% of which will pass through the 100 micron screen. Work index, you can think of a way just to express the constant in the Bond's law by an index. So what Bond suggested that if you have a feed which is very, very large, so you can take infinity. And if you get a product which has the size of 100 micron, the energy required in kilowatt hour per ton of feed that's what is called work index. So if you plug in this equation E tilde equals Wi. So E tilde becomes Wy when 1 over dp is 100 micron and 1 over df that's really infinity and we have the constant term here kb. So you get the relation between kb and wi now kb is simply 10 wi when you express the particle size in micron. If we do the same, express the particle size in millimeter, you will get hundred times ten to the negative three minus one over infinity, and in that case, you will get this term to be zero point three one six two. Wy. So this is one of the more common form that's used in the textbooks and we'll be using that as well. So this Wy is the work index and Kb term was the constant we considered in the Bond's law. Now if we express in terms of the total energy then E tilde was E over m energy required per unit mass it becomes 0 0.3162 so that's the we got Kb relationship between KB and WI. So it becomes 1 over square root of DP minus 1 over square root of DF. So do remember that in this equation, the particle sizes are in millimeters and the energy is in kilowatt hour and mass is in ton. Now if you express in terms of power and the mass feed rate, where power is given as energy over per unit time and mass rate is mass per unit time. So we'll have P over M dot, the right hand side remains the same. So here power will be in terms of kilowatt and mass will be in terms of ton per hour. Do remember that in the in this equation energy is in terms of kilowatt hour and mass in terms of ton. And again this if you use the number constant to be 0, 0 0.3162 wi this are in product size in millimeters. Now in this session we do the workbook problem on calculation of power requirement in crashing. So this is a typical problem in commercial crashing exercises. In many cases, a precise value of work index is not known. The required power is calculated based on the previous data on the requirement of power. So in such an exercise, it says that 
in grinding a feed material for which 80 percent passes through a four mesh screen the power requirement was 5.9 kilowatt to produce a product 80 percent of which passes through the 48 mesh screen now it says what will be the power required to produce a finer product 80 percent of which will pass through a 200 mesh screen now do remember that here the size is defined as based on the screen for which 80 percent of the material passes through a particular screen so this is because the work index is obtained based on that particular definition of size so if you look at the definition of work index is defined as the energy required in kilowatt hour per ton of a very large speed to produce a product 80 percent of which will pass through a 100 micron screen now look at the analysis of the problem here so we are here given two cases where the product and feed sizes are given for both cases both cases are for the same feed the required sizes of the products are different we are given the power requirement for one case and we need to estimate the power requirement for the other case so note that here we don't have any information on the mass rate or the work index however you can assume that the work index is the same because the work index will depend on the mill and the materials if the operating conditions remain the same we're supposed to get the same work index also you can assume that the same amount of particles are considered for both cases so with those assumptions which are valid we can write for the first case p1 over m dot equals 0 0.3162 wi 1 over square root of dp1 minus 1 over square root of df here this subscript 1 is used for the first case the second case we have the same formulation where the product size is dp2 the other thing remains the same now if we have this case we know what is p1 we can simply divide these two equations and we can get p2 so that's simple calculation you should be able to do it so take the time to do it and finally check that this you get a p2 value of 13.75 kilowatt thank you